All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Clark, the Center for Weight Loss Success. And today in Losing Weight USA, we're going to talk a little bit about using protein supplements. And can they help you with weight loss? Short answer there is yes, they can. Um, we'll get into some of the details with all that. Welcome to Losing Weight USA. Real-time answers to your weight loss questions. A little bit of expert advice. It gives you not only access to me, but you should be receiving the health tips and recipes via the membership portal. Each webinar is going to last a half hour or so. If you have questions, you know where to find us here at the Center for Weight Loss Success. The email is success at cfwls.com. Phone number is 757-873-1880. And you can... If you have questions, type them into the chat box as we go along here. I do encourage you, make sure you are getting into the membership site. It's the best way to get all the educational materials from all the classes, as well as the exercise things, uh, menu recipe, uh, recipe ideas, uh, all the videos that go along with the kind of the textbook type. And we keep adding more and more things, as long as all these, as well as all these live videos that I do, webinars that I do get uploaded there within a day or two. All right, let me flip the slides. So far, I've been technically, technologically challenged. Okay. All right, something happened right there. All right, very good. So we're talking about protein supplements, and they, you know, can they be helpful? Certainly, you'll find protein supplements everywhere. Literally, they're in the Seven Eleven, they're in the Kmart, they're in the, the WalMarts, the right, they're everywhere. Um, and you can find them in a whole range from fairly inexpensive to fairly expensive things. And kind of so you can find them anywhere. Is there you know ones that are better than other ones? Why are they useful? What's their real purpose? Um, can they help you improve weight loss? And then kind of, we'll kind of digress there. And why do we carry the products that we do in our nutritional store? Okay. All right. So sometimes there's that unrealistic fear. If you were to start using protein supplements for all of a sudden, you're just going to look like a bodybuilder. Well, that isn't going to happen. And it doesn't happen whether you're female or male. Um, in order to look like a bodybuilder, you have to do the bodybuilding beside the whole thing. So protein supplements can help them if that's what you're trying to do. But protein supplements themselves don't make someone look this way. It's like, no, you have to do the work. All right. The marketplace literally is overloaded. As I mentioned, you can find them absolutely anywhere at this point. Um, and just about any store that sells anything food related from the grocery store into the 7-Eleven, the Quick Marts, whatever, they're all going to have some protein supplements very likely in them. Now, just as a generality, I like to kind of just keep in mind that you tend to get what you pay for, especially from a weight perspective. What you have to realize is that almost all protein supplements were built for athletes or developed for athletes. They weren't necessarily developed for weight loss. And subsequently, then many of them out there can be helpful, but they're not necessarily all that helpful for weight loss itself. And then there are products that are built specifically or developed specifically for weight loss. And again, just keep in mind, you do tend to get what you pay for. And if you're trying to use something that wasn't developed for weight loss, and it often can be fairly inexpensive, very likely it may not work that well for you. All right, so when we're talking about using protein supplements for weight loss, we really have to back up and kind of, you know, kind of discuss really why do we care about it? Not why do we care about the weight loss, but why is the protein so important here um, in losing weight? Okay, there are a number of reasons. And the number one reason is that during weight loss, you want to preserve your lean body mass or your muscle mass. It, your muscles really um, drive your overall metabolism. It's the proverbial a pound of muscle burns a lot more calories than a pound of fat will in any 24-hour day. Okay? The better trained the muscle is, 
then the more calories it'll burn. So the, the same pound of muscle coming from a couch potato versus that pound of muscle coming from a well-trained athlete, well, the well-trained athlete's pound of muscle is going to burn a lot more calories than the couch potato's muscle. Okay, And that's why you often see kind of really uh, well-trained athletes, they may have, or you know, world-class type of athletes, they may have to take in, you know, almost, you know, seven to 10,000 calories a day because they are just calorie burning machines. Now, it's not just so much that they're exercising like crazy. They are, okay, but it's also because they actually, they build this, this muscle mass and they have well-trained muscle mass, even when they're not exercising, they're burning calories like crazy. Okay? So, and that is, something that you can have some influence in. And that's where it talk about exercise being so important, building lean body mass, preserving lean body mass. So before I get too far off track, and that's the, really the whole point of getting the protein in, is that you want to preserve your lean body mass. And so that's a very important concept, especially during calorie deprivation, which with weight loss, that's what we're talking about is calorie deprivation, meaning that we're burning more calories than what we're taking in. So if we're burning more calories than what we're taking in, you want to preserve that lean body mass. Now, the reason I stress that so much is during calorie deprivation, your body will automatically try to break down lean body mass to slow your metabolism down which in itself is a survival benefit. So if for some reason we were in a famine, which we're not, but if for some reason we were in a famine and survival would be, in, uh, would be uh, better, our survival would be better if we were to break down lean body mass, slow your metabolism way down, you could survive a lot longer during a famine. I mean, so that's kind of where we're going. So you want to prevent the lean body mass loss because when you're in a calorie deprivation, your body doesn't know that there's not a famine. It said, hey, I'm trying to actually lose some weight. And it's going to work against you, so to speak. It's going to try to slow your metabolism down. You would like to avoid that. And so kind of you want to preserve your lean body mass in order to do that, finally getting around to the point of this part of the discussion, is that you need to get in a certain amount of protein. And typically you actually have to bump the protein up somewhat while you're in a calorie deprivation to avoid that loss of lean body mass. But that's the whole purpose of this. That's why it's important. And we kind of stress, you know, getting protein in each day. And I also like to stress it's not high protein. Sometimes people think, oh, you got to be in a high protein diet. No, it's adequate protein. I'll refer you to kind of other webinars that I've done discussing that in further detail. So kind of we need to get a protein in during weight loss, right? Okay, so why use protein supplements and or meal replacement, protein meal replacements versus just, okay, just eat food, so to speak. Okay. So it can be easier, especially if you're, you're immediately post-surgery, where you can only get very, very small amounts in. It can be a very good idea to use a protein supplement, a protein meal replacement, uh, because you're taking in such a small amount, you kind of automatically have to have a further, you can have a higher percentage of that amount being protein. Okay? So it's definitely right after surgery, it's hard to achieve the amount of protein you may need just with eating food. And certainly right after surgery, when you're on liquids, well, you can't really do it just eating solid food. Then. Okay. And one of the things with protein supplements is that it tends to be very easy to count because it's going to be right there on the label for you. It's like, okay, protein supplement has this many grams of protein in there. And so it's very, very easy to count doing it that way. So it's easy to track and write them down. Keep in mind, it gets really simple. And so this can then, by having protein supplements and counting them, it can take the guesswork out of what I need to eat. Now, protein supplements also tend to control 
hunger a little bit better as well, as opposed to some type of supplement that is very high carbohydrate, lower protein, higher carbohydrate, which also tends to stimulate hunger more. So the higher protein will actually help control appetite somewhat. And overall, actually, if you were to, especially right after surgery, if you're to look at Gee, comparing trying to use real food versus the, actually the supplements, it's actually less expensive. People think, well, gee, the supplements are expensive, but it's actually less than kind of if you were to go purchasing the food, the best food, whole food, buying it clean, green, all that kind of thing, preparing it yourself. So actually a, a supplement actually can be less expensive. People often think the opposite, but it, no, when you actually look carefully at it, it isn't. that It's actually less expensive with the supplements and meal replacements. Now, protein meal replacements, okay, versus protein just supplements. Okay, what's the difference there? Protein meal replacement basically means you could live on it. I mean, it's got everything you need to survive. Okay? So meal replacement versus a protein supplement. Protein supplement typically is missing things, whether it be certain vitamins, minerals, that kind of thing. A true meal replacement, you could survive. But if you were on the desert island with plenty of water and a bunch of these meal replacements, you'd be fine. Okay. You wouldn't be, you know, be bored to tears, right? But you'd be fine. Okay. So protein meal replacements come in a variety of, they can be shakes, and that's probably one of the most common things, but they also can be bars or soups or even entrees you know, that you can find in different things. So protein, uh, protein meal replacement, it doesn't just only mean shakes. Okay? And typically what you're doing there is you're replacing at least one or more of your meals with this protein meal replacement. And they tend to be rich in protein. Okay, that's the whole purpose. Okay, and they usually have 15 to 30 grams of protein and typically should be fairly well controlled carbohydrate. Now, you do have to read the label and okay? you do want to make sure there's a good, probably good two to one ratio of protein to carbohydrate. And for people that are really sensitive to carbohydrate, it may be, need to be closer to three or four to one. Most of them, a meal replacement then is going to have essential vitamins and minerals in it. Okay, so again, a true meal replacement you could live on. Okay? They're typically fairly easy to prepare. As a shake, as an example, it's like, okay, you put the shake in the glass and you add water and you stir it up. Yeah, you can go as much as put it in a blender and add ice and make it frothy and all that kind of things too. But you can be as simple as just putting putting the powder in the glass, adding water, stir it up, shake it up, however you want to do it, and you're ready to go. So it's really easy. So it's easy to prepare. It's fairly cost effective. It's convenient. You can carry them with you wherever you want to go. Uh, you know, I, I still use a protein meal replacement for breakfast because it's easy. I don't want to take a bit too much time to actually make breakfast. It's like, no, I just you know, use a red solo cup. So what I use is just make it there. It's, we're good to go. And protein meal replacements, typically in our, what we're talking with, they are designed to help with weight loss. Some of that is dependent on what's the protein in there. And some of the protein is kind of the better protein. We'll talk a little more detail in about casein protein, which tends to gel and somewhat stick with you, so to speak. It tends to break down very slowly. Now, some of the best protein products just come from food, real food. The best food is no labels on it. Can the, so the best protein products from real food are going to be meat, seafood, cheese, and egg, which are very high protein products and with, very, with pretty much zero carbohydrate. Maybe not, maybe not quite zero, but next to zero carbohydrate in them. What you do have to be careful with with protein foods, especially during a weight loss thing, is that the calories can still be fairly high because there's more fat in protein foods. And so you do have to be a little careful there. If it, um, there's always a calorie ceiling. So kind of if someone's going, if your calories are too high, but you're eating enough protein, but your calories are too high, it's not going to work that well. And so it's kind of uh, protein product, protein supplements, protein meal replacements do tend to be calorie restricted as well. 
as opposed to a lot of protein foods. But again, from an all over nutritional aspect, it was like, okay, real food has some of the best nutrition right there. So some of the best protein products really are protein foods. All right, soy protein. Soy protein you find in a lot of it. And I just want to take a minute to talk a little bit about soy protein. It te technically is a complete protein. That's I didn't bring this up earlier, kind of complete proteins versus incomplete proteins. Complete protein basically means it has all the amino acids that your body requires. An incomplete protein may have something missing. If there are you know, all the amino acids, it may not have kind of so soy protein and most plant protein tends to not be complete proteins. Meat, seafood, cheese, egg, those are all complete proteins. Okay? Um, soy protein, a lot of products out there, um, protein products, shakes, drinks, powders, they are made from soy protein. And there's soy protein is a good protein. I can have a but there. The but is that it, the soy protein as a plant doesn't have kind of the amino acid profile that mimics muscle. It is a complete protein. So when people talk about complete protein, soy protein is a complete protein. It's just that some of the ratios aren't quite right if we're really trying to protect lean body mass. And that's where you just have to be a little careful with that. It doesn't mean you shouldn't use soy protein. And a lot of products nowadays may use a mixture of different proteins. Um, which can work very nicely then. But just soy protein all by itself, technically it's complete protein, but it doesn't mimic muscle as well and typically doesn't then kind of protect lean body mass as easily or as well. Now, could you take protein pills? Okay, well, here's the issue is that Protein has size to it, the protein molecules. And we talk about grams of protein. And gee, you have to get like, you know, I'll say, you know, right around surgery, if you're thinking of having surgery or had surgery, typically we're talking about that 90 grams of protein. You know, won't go in where we came up with all that stuff. That's kind of a different webinar, but still kind of getting that 90 grams of protein. Well, about the largest pill that you one can comfortably swallow is about a gram. So could you have protein, you know, pills or capsules? Well, the answer is, yeah, you could, but you'd have to eat, you know, 90 of them to get 90 grams of protein. So it's not like it just isn't very cost effective, it isn't an effective way to do that. Could you literally take the protein powder and put it in little capsules? Well, the answer is yes. You just eat, have to eat a boatload of them. And it's like, well, why don't you just have the protein powder? Okay. Um, so protein pills, just really, they're not a practical thing. It's like, could it be done? Yeah, it could, but it's just not a practical thing to do. All right, I kind of mentioned, kind of, I mentioned casein protein earlier, so I do want to spend just a minute or two, a couple minutes on the types of protein. Okay. Um, typically, the most common protein that's in protein products out there, I'm not we're kind of looking at protein products as opposed to food-based protein, meaning the meat, seafood, cheese, and egg. We're not talking about those. So whey protein. Now, whey comes from, you know, dairy, curds and whey, Little Miss Muffet, eating curds and whey. The curds actually is cheese, casein protein. Whey is kind of the leftover product from cheese making. Okay. So it's one of the most common protein products out there because it's a leftover product from making cheese. So they use them to make protein supplements. Okay, so it's probably the most common protein out there. Can be great for athletes. And the reason I say very great for athletes, because it's actually very quickly digested. So it's absorbed very quickly, digested very quickly, which in the long run, potentially, they may not, it may not be as satisfying. So when we're talking about weight loss, the good news is, well, it's quickly absorbed, which then right after surgery can work very nicely. It's because it's very easily absorbed, quickly absorbed. And since you, right after surgery, typically you have to sip on things, taking it very slowly in, it can work very nicely. Now, 
once you get you've healed up from surgery though and gee i can drink stuff pretty easily and i'm using this whey protein product the issue then is hey i can drink this fairly easily which if you're a world-class athlete that's great you get this big surge of amino acids but if it's not if you're not a world-class athlete then it tends not to be nearly as satisfying so it doesn't stick with you very long. You'll get this great big surge of amino acids, which right after world-class athlete workout can be very helpful for them. Most of us, even when we work out, we're not working out like world-class athletes do. And so do we need a protein supplement right around a workout? Typically not. Yeah, it doesn't mean that they're bad idea but still it's like they typically actually don't need it and part of the potential problem there is if you get a great big surge of amino acids and your body doesn't need that many amino acids because hey one you don't have that much muscle mass number two it's not revved up to metabolize all this protein because you're just a typical average, maybe weekend warrior type thing, but you're not a world-class athlete. So it doesn't need it. So you get this great big surge of amino acids. Your body doesn't need that many amino acids all at one time. Your body just takes the extra amino acids, converts it to sugar, and subsequently then you may get a great big blood sugar surge from that. And subsequently blood sugar blood sugar surges often aren't going to help you with your weight loss and it can happen and it's very easily recognized it especially in diabetics hey i checked my blood sugar after having my protein shake and my blood sugar went way up even though there wasn't any sugar or carbohydrate in the shake it's like yes that can happen and the bottom line is that for you using a very simple protein such as whey won't work that well. Which brings us then to casein. Casein is the curds and whey, the curd side of the whole thing. It's the cheese side of the whole thing. So typically it's more expensive because it's not just a waste product for making cheese. It's using the cheese itself. And so it's when people sell cheese. And so casein uh, typically comes then from dairy again. It's the cheese side of the whole thing. And it tends to gel. If you mixed up uh, in the weight and inches shakes that we have here, typically does, if you mix it up, you let it sit for a couple of minutes, you know, hey, this gets really thick. Okay. And actually that can be helpful in that when it gets down in your stomach, it actually does somewhat gel. It's broken down very slowly then. And so it's digested more slowly. It tends to be more satisfying. And it doesn't give you this huge surge of amino acids. It gives you a nice release of amino acids. And subsequently, then you don't, uh, you're not converting so much of that to sugar. Okay. Egg protein, which you see more and more products with egg protein in there. And eggs mimic muscle almost perfectly. If you think about it, an egg can, is going to build an entire animal. Really come from an egg so okay so an egg has everything you could live on eggs okay, because it has just about everything to support life okay so egg is mainly albumin but it's kind of a it's kind of a medium digested okay, it's not digested real fast it's not digested real slow it's kind of that in between and egg protein mimics muscle almost perfectly and so it can be very good for kind of helping, kind of supporting kind of lean body mass. Soy, I won't get back into that as I talked about just a slide or two ago. Collagen, collagen, you see all kinds of stuff advertised. And a lot of it's marketing. Just realize that all the collagen hoopla that's out there now is marketing. Okay? And collagen is an incomplete protein it basically comes from the tendons and ligaments of, uh, of the animals. That's where it's coming from. And that, that they have to be you know, tendons, ligaments used for something. And it does make collagen. And collagen is a good protein. It's not a complete protein. Um, it does, uh, it tends to have a little bit of the wrong ratio, so to speak, as we're trying to protect lean body mass and muscle mass. So a lot of the things talking about collagen out there is marketing. You know, it talks about keeping your skin healthy and all this. A lot of that's marketing. 
Okay. So in and itself, now, if you're getting a good protein base and you use some collagen as well, great, great. That's not a problem. But again, you only need so much protein in a day. Okay. Plant-based proteins from beans, rice, wheat, there are, you know, they do have protein in them, relatively small amounts. The issue there from a weight perspective is typically the carbohydrate amount is way too high. And it's, again, plant-based proteins typically are not complete proteins. The exception to that is soy, just kind of not the quite ratio, the best ratio there. All right, you'll often find protein blends then. Kind of if you're looking at different products, you'll find kind of protein blends. And so it'll use, there'll be some collagen, there may be casein, there may be whey protein. Okay. Whey protein generally is the, the used in the, as far as volume goes. It's still mainly whey. So often if you're looking at the ingredients label, again, First ingredient in the list is going to be the one that you that's the has the most volume to it. So often whey protein is first. Okay. Um, so subsequently, then there may be different proteins there. So a mixture can actually be very helpful. But a protein blend then kind of just utilizes the different types of proteins and puts it in a blend. And subsequently, that can be useful there. I mentioned this earlier, weight ninjas. I, I, I still use this as my, kind of my go-to breakfast, if you want to call it, um, in that. And it is a true meal replacement. It's mainly casein protein. And so subsequently, you know, it's broken down fairly slowly, tends to keep you full for a longer period of time, um, and tends to work fairly nicely. Now, just a, a little sidelight on this uh, weight ninjas product. It, it is a good product, but we do have a number of patients who they're so carbohydrate sensitive that even though this is kind of a two to one ratio, protein to carbohydrate, it that that actually is still too high, too much carbohydrate for them. Great protein source, but actually maybe too high carbohydrate. And so some people using this as a jump start, which we we market it as a jumpstart diet as well. Um, actually they're so sensitive to carbohydrates, it doesn't work well for them. And for that, we have kind of a low carbohydrate version of the Jumpstart diet, uh, which can work better than for the people that are really sensitive to carbohydrates. A ready to drink, um, it, again, it, it, it just puts everything in right there. So you don't have to add water to it. The water has been added. Typically, you just got to keep it cold, shake it up, drink it, good to go. Um, some of them will be meal, true meal replacements. Yeah, which then has everything in it that you could live off of. And some are more of just a protein supplement, protein drink, protein shake. That in the long run, you really can't live off of. All right, some would come in shaker bottles. We have kind of a, in the store, nutritional store, we have you know, examples of each of these type of things. And it's literally very simple. You carry the bottle around there, but now you add water to the bottle, you shake it up, you're good to go. You don't have a little packet. All right, kind of true meal replacement. Kind of, you know, why I alluded to there, kind of talked a little about meal replacements. The, many of the sh shake or pudding products are really true meal replacements. And again, the meal replacement just basically means that you truly could live off it. Okay? And so there may be some nuanced differences. You look at the label, there are just some little bit of differences in what's in there because many protein products, protein supplements will still add some vitamins and minerals. Um, again, you just wouldn't, you couldn't really live off of them. Okay, and that's a true meal replacement you can live off of. All right, these are all kind of just examples, Karen, if you're watching this, I won't do bore you with all the all the different things but there are hot chocolates there are oatmeals there are kind of um, cappuccinos that you can get a bunch of different flavors on there and it really depends on what do you like and what's the the palatability and what what people do like but they can be very helpful for a breakfast thing i mentioned earlier i use weight ninjas fairly routinely but i also tend to use some of the oatmeal products um you do this is a protein-based oatmeal not kind of the Oatmeal-based oatmeal, I guess, because that uh, oatmeal itself is truly a, a straight carbohydrate, pretty much. All right, using this snacks again, kind of, yes, they can. Uh, as 
in long term, you know, I'm not a big fan of snacking. Okay, just because uh, and anything you eat will raise your insulin levels. I, I like people to have the mindset long term of having meals and then have not eating times. And it should be kind of two or three meals a day in the long run. Um, kind of getting that and right after surgery. Obviously, you can't do that. You got to work at things throughout the day. Um, but certainly, if you get, I need something, there's got a protein based a product, protein based snack can be much better than opening the bag of chips. So, just some tips for success. Can you, no one has to use protein products or protein supplements, but they actually can be extremely helpful. You know, people look at cost of them. You do tend to get what you pay for. But it also does decrease the cost of eating real food. They're convenient, too. They can make you take the time away from preparing all these things. It only takes a couple of minutes to prepare. So it also is really easy to count, it's like, especially if you're trying to keep track. Okay, here's what I had. Write it down. Again, know exactly what I had. There's no take the guesswork out of that. Certainly, you can provide in a, during a weight loss plan. Can provide the extra protein without driving up the calories real high, and that's the basis of preserving lean body mass during weight loss, which keeps your metabolism good as possible. So they can actually be very helpful. And just a you know a little statistics as an aside, so to speak, when I look at kind of um, and this is in medical weight loss, non-surgical weight loss, but the concept works, okay? People that use supplements in medical weight loss or meal replacements in a medical weight loss plan versus I'm doing it all with food. People with uh, using supplements actually lose about twice as much weight. I'll say that again. People that use, especially if they, if they use supplement only for a period of time, they'll actually lose about twice as much weight as using food. It is because it's accurate it's controlled there's no measurement there's no it's it's very easy to use now you have to have the mindset that i'm going to do this as a lot of people would hey i'd rather use food and food is the right answer in the long run but just looking at kind of medical weight loss programs people that use meal replacements use supplements lose a lot more weight All right, um, certainly protein supplements that will make sure you get the adequate protein in. Um, they tend to be very satisfying, especially the casein protein. They give a structure to weight loss as opposed to eat healthy, okay, which eat healthy is true, um, but still kind of gives real structure to it. It's easy to count and then potentially can increase compliance because you tend to see better results. And when you see better results, it's easier to stick with it. Again, not necessarily the answer in the long run. And again, protein supplements are everywhere. Just kind of there, you'll see them everywhere. They are not all created equal. Again, the real purpose, again, is preserving lean body mass, which helps preserve your metabolism. Um, certainly protein does, and we talked about this in other webinars, it can manipulate hormones to help with weight loss. I Maybe mean, typically there's less of an insulin jump with protein supplements, as well as there's a bigger growth hormone jump with um, using protein supplements as well, which in the long run can help with weight loss as well. So they can improve weight loss significantly as long as they're used appropriately and if you continue kind of doing all the other right things. And that's, what we, that's part of the reason of why we carry what we carry in our nutritional store because they are specifically made for weight loss and potentially then can help that much more in our weight loss effort. All right, don't see any specific questions at the moment, but if you have questions, don't hesitate, pick up the phone, send an email. Our phones will still be the same, email still be the same. You may notice that a lot of things are gone from behind me. It's because yes, we are moving out of this building here in the very near future. All right, well, thank you all for listening. No, oh, I throw a couple of books there too. Certainly all the, the books that can help from pre-surgery, post-surgery, medical weight loss. We've got all those available as well. Little reminder, 
um, kind of make sure you're uh, logging into the membership site, get the weight loss tips as well as the weekly recipes. Tune in each Tuesday, 12.15 for the next webinar. Watch your email for the invite and link. And remember, it's your life. Make it a healthy one. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.